Do you remember that energy comes in many forms? In the last video, we discussed about potential energy. Now, we will discuss about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of a moving object. The word kinetic comes from the Greek word kineticus, which means moving. Kinetic energy quantifies the amount of work the object can do because of its motion. In the last lesson, we had an activity about bowling. The plastic or rubber ball you push to hit empty plastic bottles or bowling pins in our previous activity has kinetic energy. The force applied causes the ball to accelerate from rest to a certain velocity. In lesson 1, we learned that acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. The equation to compute for acceleration is acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time, where A is acceleration, VF is final velocity, VI is initial velocity, and T is time. In our previous example, since the ball started from the boy's hand, which is at rest, the initial velocity is zero since the ball did not move yet. Thus, the acceleration is simply velocity divided by time. Now let's get to formula for force. Remember the formula in the law of acceleration, where force is equal to mass times acceleration? Let's substitute acceleration to the formula in the law of acceleration to the formula above. We have force is equal to mass times velocity divided by time. The equation in finding the average velocity of the ball is average velocity equals initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. Since the initial velocity is 0, the average velocity is final velocity divided by 2 or average velocity equals velocity divided by 2. The distance traveled by the ball before it hits the empty plastic bottles or bowling pins is given by the equation displacement is equal to average velocity times time. Since average velocity is from two values, we divide the average velocity by 2 multiplied by time. Alright, so now let's derive the formula for kinetic energy from the equations we previously discussed. Work is equal to force times displacement, and force is equal to mass times velocity divided by time. Substituting force from the formula on the left to the formula on the right, we get work is equal to mass times velocity divided by time times displacement. Now displacement is equal to velocity multiplied by time all divided by 2. Substituting displacement from the formula on the left to the formula on the right, we get work is equal to mass times velocity, all divided by time multiplied to velocity times time divided by 2. We now have the formula work is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by 2. This shows that the work done in exhilarating an object is equal to the kinetic energy gained by the object. So the formula also for kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared divided by 2. Here is a sample problem. A 3,000 kilogram truck has a velocity of 40 meters per second. What is the truck's kinetic energy? The formula we use is kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared divided by 2. Using the formula, we get the square of 40 meters per second, which results to 1,600 meters squared per second squared. Next, multiply the given mass of 3,000 kilograms to 1,600 meters squared per second squared, resulting to 4 million 800,000 kilograms times meters squared per second squared. Lastly, 
we divide this by 2 equals 2,400,000 kilogram meters squared per second squared or 2,400,000 joules. Here is another sample problem. What is the mass of the hockey player who is moving across the hockey rink at a velocity of 10 meters per second and using 3,500 joules of kinetic energy? The formula we use is kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared divided by 2. Now, let's derive the formula to get the mass of the hockey player. We will multiply both sides with 2 and divide both sides by velocity squared to get the mass. Now, we have the derived formula. Mass equals 2 multiplied by kinetic energy divided by velocity squared. Using the derived formula, let's substitute the given figures from the problem. We then get 2 multiplied by 3,500 joules divided by the square of 10 meters per second. Again, a joule is equal to kilogram meters squared per second squared, and the square of 10 meters per second is equal to 100 meters squared per second squared. 2 multiplied by 3,500 kilogram meters squared per second squared is equal to 7,000 kilogram meters squared per second squared. We can now cancel out common units, leaving out the kilogram unit. Now let's divide 7,000 kilograms by 100. As a result, the hockey player has a mass of 70 kilograms. Do you remember this example of a roller coaster? Energy changes from potential to kinetic energy and back again many times over the course of a ride. This is called energy transformation. Energy transformations are processes that convert energy from one form to another. Any type of energy use must involve some sort of energy transformation. Take this for example. Work is done when pedaling up a hill. A force is applied along a distance and potential energy increases. When at the top, the potential energy is at a maximum. As we coast downhill, kinetic energy increases and potential energy decreases. As the bicycle begins to roll down the hill, it loses potential energy but gains kinetic energy. The potential energy of the bicycle due to its position at the top of the hill is converted to kinetic energy. Have you ever tried jumping on a trampoline? Why is it so much easier to jump higher on a trampoline than it is to jump on the ground? Where does the extra energy come from? The springs underneath the trampoline gain potential energy when we land on the trampoline surface. So when we jump on a trampoline, we soar higher than we would than if we jumped on the ground. The extra energy that makes us jump higher on a trampoline does not appear out of nowhere. It is simply elastic potential energy coming from the spring that was converted into kinetic energy as we jumped. This example illustrates the application of the law of conservation of energy. This law states that energy can only be transformed from one form to another. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Thus, the total sum of energy in the universe never changes. The concept of energy is fascinating. Its transformation from one form to another lets us power our engines by burning dead fossil fuels, experience spectacular fireworks when a mixture of chemicals is ignited, and gives our body the energy to live. Now let's wrap it up. Kinetic energy is the energy of a moving object. Energy transformations are processes that convert energy from one form to another. The law of conservation of energy states that energy can only be transformed from one form to another, and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. That's all for now. See you on our next video, and don't forget to keep your minds busy! 
If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.